Hi, this is Dan Cordopassi of TSG Multimedia. Today I'm reviewing an HO Scale C44-9W from Cato. These models would be appropriate from any era from the early 1990s on up. Many are still on the rails today. The model comes in two versions. There's a DC-only version which has an MSRP of $195. My model is the Kobo Shops version which has the Loksound DCC sound decoder for $295. Cato has done a good job improving the detailing on these models from the early runs of Dash 9s that they did back in the day. The paint on this model is very good and the writing is very crisp. There were some voids in the Southern Pacific on the side of the engine, but these correspond with the panel seams and the doors, so that's probably not too much of a problem. All of the small writing is legible. One of the things I like is that the thickness of the handrails is much closer to scale than they used to be on Cato's. Some of the handrail stanchions on the side do lean slightly forward. This is a problem that I've seen on other engines with plastic handrails. After comparing the model to photos of real Southern Pacific Dash 9s, one of the things I found that wasn't quite right, because most of the model is right, is the grill on the air conditioning unit on the fireman's side should be more horizontal rather than vertical. On the real ones, these parts are sometimes changed out as AC units wear out and need to be replaced. And on models, they do have aftermarket parts that would be more appropriate. So if you wanted to change it, you could. I like that Caddo has put the ditch lights in the right place for Southern Pacific units on this run. I have some of their earlier ones, and the ditch lights were mounted incorrectly under the deck. This is a big improvement. I like that they've also added MU hoses and uncoupling levers, although some of the details seem a little on the chunky side to me compared to some other brands. Another improvement they've made is that the windshield wipers are separate pieces instead of being cast into the plastic like they did on their older runs. The model features separately applied grab irons, which is nice, although again they are a little bit on the chunky side, I think. The brake wheel detail is also good. The model has Caddo knuckle couplers on both ends. The coupler on the back was low according to the KD height gauge. The model picks up electricity from all 12 wheels and all six axles are powered. All of the wheels were engaged according to the NMRA standards gauge. The model has a speaker mount built into the fuel tank area here. The model weighs 17.8 ounces and registered 3.5 ounces of drawbar pull on my force gauge. As I mentioned at the beginning, the model is equipped with an ESU Loksound Select Sound Decoder. As it comes from the factory, the volumes are set very high. My personal preference is to reduce the volumes in the prime mover and some other noises, so I'll probably do that later. The model runs very smoothly and quietly as you'd expect from Cato. The headlight, number boards, and ditch lights all operate. However, it's a little disappointing that they're not independently controllable. All of them operate off the zero key on DCC. Considering that the Loksound Select has six functions, it would have been really nice if Cato had found a way to make these operate separately. I've taken the shell off the model to show that it only has one LED in front and one in the back, and all the Kobo shops have done is to take a Loksound Select and plug it into the socket that's in the light board. So again, I'm a little bit disappointed that they didn't find a way, and I realize that it's the design of the engine, but you know, with that many functions, it would be really nice to have the ditch lights and the number boards be separately controllable. I like this model overall. I like how they've gotten the details much closer to the real SP units on this run. However, I'm a little disappointed in the light control. I think at this price level, there really should be independent control for the ditch lights and number boards. And I'm not sure that the extra value of having the decoder already installed is really worth it. You're spending another $100 
to put in a decoder that you could get for 80 plus a speaker. So maybe it would be close to 100, but still, I mean, all, since, considering that all they're doing is plugging it into the socket, I really don't see the value there. So I'm going to take off a spike for that, and I'm going to take off a spike for the coupler height being wrong. So my final verdict is 8 out of 10 spikes. If you or your company make a product that you'd like us to review, please drop us a line at reviews at tsgmultimedia.com.